Now we all wish for a white Christmas, but it rarely happens, especially in the UK. I can count on my hands how many times I've actually seen snow at Christmas. So today I'm gonna to show you how you can recreate this effect just using a couple of adjustment layers in Photoshop in this special Christmas episode of Photoshop Tutorials. And I'm gonna start right now. Now in this tutorial, we're going to be using overlays. Now, as a little bit of a Christmas gift to you guys and all of the subscribers, if you'd like to download any of the overlays, specifically the snow overlays, then just go ahead to the link in the description. And I've got a bunch of free overlays that you can download for free. And that is my Christmas gift to you guys. So make sure to go to the link in the description to get the full access to all of the overlays. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Right guys, so the first thing you want to do is just go ahead and choose a photo that you'd like to add snow to. And if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial, make sure to go to the link in the description and you can download the same photo that I'm using from unsplash.com. And today I'm going to be using this photo here. Now, as you can see, it is a beautiful photo, but it, the, it, the issue is, it is in the summertime. You've got lovely green grass, you've got the lovely blue kind of river running through it. So let's go ahead and change this into a wintry theme just using a couple of adjustment layers. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and select the area that we want to add snow to. Now in this particular case, we kind of want to add it to the green part. So we want to add it to the areas that the snow would land on. And that's obviously predominantly going to be the grass in this particular case. But in, in your case, it might be something similar. So let's go ahead and select the green first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go up to select and then I'm going to drop down to color range. And what we want to do is select the green. So what I'm going to do is turn the fuzziness down and I'm going to go ahead and turn the selection preview to none so we can actually see the photo. Now what we want to do on the right hand side we've got three eyedropper tools. The one on the left hand side is just your simple. Uh, then you've got the add and you've got subtract. So we want to go ahead and just select the simple one first. Then what you want to do, go ahead and zoom in. And what we want to do is go ahead and select the green of the actual grass. So we're gonna go ahead and just select it like so. Now, once you've selected one, you want to go to the plus symbol one. So we want to add to our selection. And basically you want to start clicking around. And as you can see in the little thumbnail within the color range, you can see that it's now starting to turn to white in certain areas. And what that means, is the areas that are white are the areas that will be selected once we actually exit out of the color range tool. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go around and you're just gonna just start selecting random areas, but make sure they're green. So this will create a better and larger range of selection. So what I'm gonna do is select some areas in the foreground, some areas in the midground, and then areas in the background. The larger the sample area, the better the outcome will be. But make sure you don't select any other areas, like for instance, in this particular case, some of the rocks or maybe any of the water, because obviously snow isn't naturally going to fall on those areas. And we want to make this photo look realistic. So we're gonna go ahead and select the random areas like so. Okay, so I think that's a large enough area. Now what we can do is you can actually see how it would fall by going to our selection preview. So at the bottom here, we've got a selection preview here. We can go ahead and skip it over to grayscale. Now any area that is white in this particular case is where snow is going to be. Any area that's black is where snow isn't going to be. And as you can see, where all the areas we've selected roughly works out. Now, we can actually increase and decrease the kind of blurriness and the selection area by going to the fuzziness tool. And we can go to the fuzziness tool here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase it until you see where all of these little kind of black dots are appearing. We don't necessarily want that in this photo. So we want to increase it until those black dots have pretty much disappeared. So I'm gonna go for let's say a range of 60 in this particular case, but that number might differ for you. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go for a sample, uh, let's go for something a little bit lower actually. Let's go for, let's go for 30 actually in this particular case. Again, the number might change for yourself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Now as you can see, the photo now looks like it's got loads of marching ants over it, and that is your selection. So what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and basically use the solid color adjustment layer to create the snow effect. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go down to our adjustment layers, making sure the selection is still activated, and we're gonna go ahead and choose solid color. Now in our solid color, obviously we want to choose white because white is the color of snow. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose white like so. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Now, as you can see, it is pretty much covered everywhere in snow, but there are a few areas which I feel we should have probably selected, but didn't. Now you have a choice here. You can either recreate the selection, which again, might take a little bit of time, but in this particular case, I'm just going to go and paint over it using the brush tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure we've got our layer mask selected in our white area. I'm gonna go over to our left-hand side and select the brush tool and making sure we're painting white as our foreground color, because we want to paint white onto the photo. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and paint over any areas that you think you have missed in the selection. Now, of course, if you want to, you can go ahead and just recreate the selection again, making sure you don't miss any areas that you feel like you did in the first round. But just to make this tutorial a little bit quicker, I'm just gonna paint over the areas that I feel that I missed in this tutorial. I would probably go back and recreate this selection, but I think just for this tutorial, I'm just going to do it like so. Lovely. So as you can see, it looks a lot more realistic now. Now we've covered over the areas that we might have not selected in our original selection. So now what we want to do is we want to add in the actual snow. So we want to make it look like it is currently snowing. Not that it has or will snow, but it, it is snowing at the moment. We can do this by using the overlays that I've got linked in the description. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go to my snow overlays here, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and choose selection or snow three. And as you can see, it's already cut out. It's just ready to place as it's a PNG. So what I'm gonna do is drag that and just drop that onto this photo. Now, obviously, because this is a portrait photo, we need to go ahead and rotate this effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate that overlay like so. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make it the size of the photo. So I'm just gonna increase that all the way like so. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click enter. And as you can see, it isn't a very strong effect. It doesn't really look like it is still snowing. So what we can do is we can duplicate it and then rotate it. So it makes it look double as thick. So I'm gonna go ahead and press Command J on our keyboard. Then what I'm gonna do is press Command T. That will allow you to free transform. And then I'm just going to rotate that 180 degrees. And I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Now, as you can see, we have now added in this lovely amount of snow here. Now, snow has a certain effect on further distant objects. It looks almost like fog if you're taking photos very far distant away, as you can see in this particular photo. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a gradient to replicate this kind of foggy look that snow can sometimes create. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna firstly go down to our adjustment layers icon, and then I'm going to go ahead and select gradient. Now in our gradient tool, we want to make sure the gradient at the top is white and that the gradient at the bottom is clear. So we can go into our gradient editor here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and select white here. So instead of this green, I'm gonna go ahead and select white. Then on the uh, right hand side, we're also going to go ahead and select white. Now that's on the bottom, so that's our color. On the top here is our opacity. So on the left hand side, we want 100. And then on the right hand side, we want zero. So as you can see, white to white, 100% to zero in our opacity. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and click OK. Then what we want to do is we want to go to make sure it's linear. So we're gonna go ahead and choose linear like so. And then obviously we want it at the top, we don't want it at the bottom. So I'm gonna to go to our angle here and I'm gonna rotate that to minus 90 degrees. And as you can see, that effect is now starting to work a little bit. So what we can do then is just simply go ahead and click OK. Now obviously it's a little bit too strong. We don't want it, we don't want it so strong that it's completely overpowering the effect. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drop the opacity of that specific layer. So we're gonna go to our gradient layer here, or our gradient fill layer one, and then we'll go to our opacity, and I would say drop it down to around 50%. And as you can see, it's added in this haziness look, which I would say works really, really nicely with this photo. And overall, I would say we're almost done. There's only one more effect, and that is going to be using the actual vibrance layer. And we're gonna increase the vibrance of the blues just ever so slightly. So what I'm gonna do is go down to our adjustment layers again, guys, and for the last time, I'm gonna go ahead and select Vibrance. Now, I really like this blue in the photo. I think it offers a nice, good polarization to the whites that we have just added and recreated. So I'm gonna to go to our Vibrance selection here, and I'm just gonna increase the Vibrance. I'm gonna leave the saturation alone. I'm just gonna increase the Vibrance, which is the purity of the color. And I'm gonna increase it to around 40%. And it has really brought out those blues that you can find in the valley floor and in kind of, I think that is a river. So that looks really, really nice now. So what I can do is zoom out a little bit. And I must say, I am really happy. Now, obviously the longer you spend on the selection in the first bit will make this selection look a lot better. 
Overall, I think this looks really good, but if I spent maybe another extra half an hour, it would look a lot more realistic. So overall, I thought I'm really happy with this effect. So if I show you the before, as you can see, very summery, lots of green grass. And if I show you the after, wow, that looks really, really summery. And I must say, I love this effect for recreating snow where there isn't. And sometimes you need that, you need a little bit of extra special kind of Christmassy theme to your photo, then this effect will work wonders. And write down in the description if you think this worked for you. Here is the before and here is the after.